Hello guys, my name is Larry and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'll say Larry, Larry Spruce. That's what we go by on the channel anyway. We don't have one of them high tech names. But anyhow, today what we're going to discuss is how to hook up this 15 amp, 110 volt light switch. As you see, if we can get this thing to focus, got two brass terminals on one side, you got the ground terminal on the opposite side. These things are actually very simple to install. However, before you start, make sure you got the power turned off on any circuit that you're working on. We're not responsible for accidents. Give us a moment, we'll get the show on the road. There's your switch, we'll show you how to hook her up here just shortly. Stay tuned, here we go. All right, to get us started, these are a few of the tools that you're gonna possibly need to do this installation. Phillips head screwdriver, your choice of what brand. Utility knife. A pair of pliers, maybe something like this. And I like the cobalt. You know, I bought a set of these here, oh, about eight months ago. Different types, different style pliers, and actually they've been really good. So, kudos to the cobalt. A pair of needle lows to put your hook in the wire. And I've got a pair of channel lock wire strippers here. Pretty fond of those as well. Channel lock makes some really good tools. Then of course you're going to need your light switch. And your choice of connectors. Now I'm going to use these quick ones as well. Or just give you an example of what they are. Of course you got your wire nuts. And this wire nut here in particular is for the ground. It has a hole in top of it. So we can actually run the ground wire through it and uh, have one tie up at the switch so it doesn't look so tacky. So let's get going. For the purpose of the video today, we're not going to show you a new install, but I'll give you some clues on it. You'll take your utility knife and you'll want to, this is wire that you'd get off a row. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and just get right in the center where that ground wire rides and cut in there lightly. Don't go crazy with it because you cut into the other wire. And then of course you'll come back over here, snip this out of there, get that off, take the paper that's protecting the ground wire and cut that off as well. Now you're down to the bare wires. Now let's assume that this wire here is the power wire coming in from the breaker. This is the voltage coming in from the breaker box. You'll then take, if this was a new install, find the correct size for that right there, strip it back about three quarters of an inch down to the copper wire. Copper wire, do the same thing on the other one, down to about three quarters of an inch. Now you've got the wires the way you want them. And these wires should already be coming in if you're just changing out the switch. All you're going to do is replace this switch. The wires should already be there. This is the power coming in again. I'm, I'm going to try not to confuse you. Now what you would do is you would take your needle nose and you'd want to put a little hook on the end of these. Kind of like, like so. Actually, you want to peel a little bit more off of there because you don't want that insulation up underneath that screw. So take a little bit more off of there when you install it. Make sure that it's got a good contact on that screw. Now this is wrong. I should have actually did that on the black wire. And I still have the chance. To peel me a little bit more of that off of there. Now we got it. This white wire is neutral. This is common. This is ground. I jumped ahead of myself. I was already trying to put a hook on this one. We're not going to put a hook on this one. You didn't need it. You're just going to tie this wire to the other white wire. It's going to kind of go around the switch. So get you a little bitty hook on there like so. Let me show you that. There you go. Now when you come over here to the switch, Make sure you put it in the position you really need it to be, up and down, 
that's off that's on so the power wire is going to come in here like so and you see how I got that hooked around there you want to make sure that you hook that hook coming from the bottom and going around the top like that so that when you tighten this screw it's pulling that wire into it and this will lock it down inside this little square area here and you get a real good contact that way so pull the wire snug got overlooked that old band-aid finger got it caught up in a solar fan I was working on the other day and make sure they're really really good and tight okay now back to that this is the power in power going to that wire now let's assume for the purpose of this video that this wire that I'm show, showing you here is actually going to the light switch. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over here, we're going to strip that wire. About three quarters of an inch of it, something like that. There we go, peel that off. And we'll peel that off. All right, you're going to do the same thing. This is the wire going to the, whatever you're trying to light up. Maybe the ceiling light, maybe a fan. I'm not sure. It depends on your scenario. Bend this thing over just like so. And I did the same thing again. I didn't take enough off of it. So you can always go back and grab you a little bit more and rip it up. You come back in there. Put your hook on it, just like so. Not the perfect hook, but it'll work. Same thing, hook it up the same way on the bottom terminal. Try to get that thing up as snug as you can. I'd like to have a little bigger hook there. That way it will make better contact around the switch. But I think you get the point there, okay. So now you've got 110 volt coming in. When you flip the switch, it makes continuity, runs back out here, going to the light that you're trying to power up. Now I bet you're asking, well, what do we do with them other wires? Well, let's see if we can get this old tough wire bent around here a little bit. Sorry about my old clumsy hands. Let me get this situated here. I got wire hanging everywhere. Boy, that was a flop, wasn't it? Okay, we'll do this again. You sure don't want to install one that way, right? I wouldn't want you to, and I wouldn't want to. But that's what happens. So we're going to go back over here again, try not to cut that wire off like we did a while ago. This, would, this movie would make it for bloopers and blunders, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's try this again. We're going to put another hook in there. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. Not fast forward, but back, back, backwards. Okay. There we go. That is what happens whenever you try to cut too deep into, into the wire, whenever you're trying to pull the insulation off. So let's correct our problem. And I'm kind of glad that happened to show you what can happen. And in the end, you won't have no light switch that works. Okay. We did it right this time. Third time's a charm though. Let's see if it breaks now. I don't think it will. So anyhow, now back over to this side. All you're going to do on the white wires you're going to twist these things back together. Now, there's controversy out there. Should you put a wire nut on two wires without twisting them? I always highly recommend taking some lineman pliers and twisting these and twisting these and twisting these, but I don't have my lineman pliers with me. So for the purpose of the video, we're just going to put a wire nut on there. And all you're doing is you're taking both white wires and twist them till you see that thing start twisting right there. That's a good connection. Now then, let's recap. White wire coming in, 
white wire going out it just bypasses the switch it doesn't make connection on any part of the switch the girder side I guess you'd say 110 coming in 110 going out okay guys I kind of got a little bit ahead of myself and got a little bit ahead of you but I'll explain what I did here I forgot to turn the camera on anyhow this is your ground wire wrap the incoming ground wire with the exiting ground wire some lineman pliers or pliers similar like you see right here put your hook on the end of that this is the green terminal for the ground put it down there like so get your screwdriver tighten that up and make sure all them wires are very very tight all right recap finish what should work so what you got here now is let me get this rag out of the way 110 volt coming in let's see if we get this heavy stuff to cooperate voltage coming in on the common switch up down whichever way you got it wired coming out running down this wire here going to the the light or whatever you're trying to get the power to ground wire coming in wrapped up on this one here tied into the green terminal neutral wire coming in off the breaker tied in with the connector electrical connector runs out to whatever you're trying to put the power to very simple guys and uh, let that be a lesson learned back there earlier in the video where I cut that wire too deep when I was trying to pull the, insula the actual insulation off of that wire. And, you know, I've been doing this many, many years, and you just make that mistake sometimes. But uh, that's one you want to try to avoid. I'm, I'm kind of glad it happened so that you can see what would have happened. If that wire would have been just a piece of it hanging on there, we would not have had a, a proper connection and the possibility of a fire or something like that. But it, it could arise from it. Throw a little insight on these. These are, I call them slip connects. They're electrical connections that you don't need any special tools. Just take the insulation off the wire. This is, I guess you call it a bonus section. You take that off of there and slide these right in there just like so, and they lock in place. You can run, this is a one, two, three, four wire setup. The only thing is they're not reusable. I think this is 600 volts, 24 amps. So you do have a few limitations, not much at 600 volts, but 24 amps is max. These are your standard old wire nuts, been around many, many years old, probably as many years as I have. Nah, I'm an old fart, but not that long. But guys, I hope that, that sheds some light on the video. Uh, the video sheds some light that will help you in some form or fashion. We're not a professional, we're not an expert, we're not endorsed by anybody. But uh, Cobalt Tools, I like them. I put a plug out there for them even though they're not paying me nothing. But Cobalt Tools, great tool. Found these at Lowe's Home Improvement Center. Questions, comments, post them below. We try to respond within 24 to 48 hours. Again, I hope this helped you. Hit the like, subscribe button. It'll help us out. Stay tuned for our future videos, especially once you hit the subscribe button. I'll send you a little teaser, and you'll get to see what our next video is going to be a lot, uh, be, be about. Got to express, uh, excuse me, I get a little tongue-tied at my age. I had COVID, and my mind's still not there 100%, but we are still trying, and we're still struggling. We're going to try to help you all any way we can. Thanks for watching.